In this Photoshop AI tutorial for beginners, I will show you how to use the Photoshop AI generative fill. Let's get started to show you how to use the generative AI in Photoshop. First things first, in this example, the first example, we're going to add something to the scene using the generative AI. We're going to use the contextual taskbar that you see right here. But if you do not see this in your Photoshop, go up to window in the tabs up above and then scroll down to the bottom and you will see contextual taskbar. Select this and it will appear on screen. You can move this taskbar around by grabbing the edge of it right here and moving it into a place where you're happy. Once you're happy with the position of the contextual taskbar, you can select these three dots and you can pin its position. Right here, you can see it reads pin bar position. This is helpful because when you're making your selections, occasionally this bar will float around on the screen to try to create the space so that when you're entering your prompts, it will have enough space to give you when you're entering it. If you're pinning the position, it won't move from that position on your canvas. So now we've gone through that, let's add something to the scene. We need to first make a selection. There are a few different selection tools in Photoshop. In this example, we're gonna use the rectangular marquee tool to make a selection on the sofa. So let's first select the rectangular marquee tool and let's make a rectangle on the sofa. I'm going to cover this space. Great, now we have our selection, we have the option of a generative fill. We're going to add a snake to this sofa. Let's open the generative fill by selecting it in the contextual taskbar. And now I'm going to write one simple prompt, snake. I'm not gonna add any actions to the snake. It's just going to be snake, keeping things nice and simple. Once you're happy with the prompt that you've entered, I'm going to select generate, follow along and do the same. And you will get a snake generated on the screen in your image. So we're just waiting for the generation to take place right now. And you can see that we have a few tips that also populate on the screen as well. Read these tips, it will help you as a beginner as well. So once this is completed and we've generated our snake, you can see it has appeared in the image. So we have one snake in the image right here. We can also take a closer look if we go into view and then from view, you can zoom in and you also have the shortcut. So to, view, to zoom in is control and the plus on your keyboard. To zoom out will be control and the minus on your keyboard. So if we use that shortcut now, we can zoom into our image. I also have a touchpad so I can kind of scroll to the left and right with my touchpad. If you're using a mouse, of course, you can do this using the scroller down below or on the other axes to move up and down. So you can see our snake has now been generated in the image. I'm going to scroll through the other variations of the snake that we also have, because when you're using the generative AI tool, you will have more than one variation of your generated image. In this case, a snake. By pressing this button right here, I will be able to move to the next variation. For example, this is a second snake, and then we have a third snake. We can generate more snakes, or we can add more to our prompt. But keep in mind, our previous variations will also be available when you're doing this. So if we go to the window on the right hand side, and let's say that I want a cobra snake, and I want it to be red. So a red cobra snake, and then we select generate. This will begin to generate another set of variations inside of the selection, the rectangular marquee tool selection we've already made. So keep in mind, we are selecting a space on the sofa, and that is going to be deciding the size of the image that we're generating and also its position. That's very important, it will make more sense in a moment. So we have new variations. We can scroll through the previous and new variations that you will also be able to see on the right hand side over here. So you can select and delete as you please when you're generating these images. You can also scroll through using the arrows like I am right now. There's one thing I'd like to point out as well. One, it's taken into consideration the reflection and the textures surrounding the image. This is why I've zoomed in to give you a closer look. Because if you try to move this image, for example, with this tool here, we can move and transform our image. You will see that it's also generated a background as well. This is not a transparent image. It does not have an alpha layer. It creates the image using AI around it as well as the image itself. So when you move this, you will actually be moving the background that has been created with it as well. 
To undo an action in Photoshop to get it back to the position that it was, you can press Ctrl and Z. Or you can go to the Edit tab and you can find Undo or Redo. In this case, it's going to undo the last action, which is Undo Select Variation. If you keep going with the undo, you will be able to undo all of the actions you've made. And we're going to do that right now to make sure there's no actual snake in any of the images. And all of our variations will not be created. As you can see, we've gone back to the starting position. So we've shown you how to add something to a scene, but there's a lot more you can do with this generative AI. Before we move on to the next stage, let's show you some more creations that we can add to the scene. In this example, we're going to create a lamp. Instead of using the rectangular marquee tool, let's try something with the lasso tool. So with the lasso tool, I'm going to use a free hand and we're going to make a really messy shape. So I'm just going to drag as if I'm using my finger, which I am, as if I'm doing some finger painting. And I'm just going to draw a shape when I'm imagining where the lamp would be in the image. So now I've created the shape. Let's go to generative fill and let's call it a bright lamp. Of course, you can also zoom out and we've gone through the shortcut of doing that control and minus. You can also zoom in with control and plus to get more of your image, which is going to be very important for the next step. So let's move to our next image as we'll be doing more with the generative AI. I'm going to zoom out using control and minus. So we have more of a look of what's going on here. I've already pinned the position of my contextual taskbar so I can move that into a different position, which is going to be very important right now. We have the Statue of Liberty very famous monument. We're going to add more to the image. So we have more space to work with. It's very important that you learn this as a beginner using this generative AI in Photoshop. This is going to be absolutely amazing. I'm about to blow your minds. So if you go into the crop tool in the taskbar right here, you will see that it will automatically select your image to be cropped, but you can expand your image using the AI in Photoshop. So I'm going to grab the edge and I'm going to pull down. And as you can see, it's given us more of a canvas, but that canvas is empty. That's why it's white. We can generate more of the Statue of Liberty or the AI can use its intelligence to create more of the Statue of Liberty and the sky in the canvas. If we leave the prompt completely empty and select generate in this example with our selection, watch what happens when we generate using the crop tool. So we haven't moved off the crop tool, staying on the crop tool, making more of a canvas, and we've generated an image without a prompt. Let's have a look and see what happens. Wow. So now we have more of the Statue of Liberty that has been created, and we have more of the sky in the background. That means we can do more with this image. This is how you can generate a background or more of an image with the canvas crop tool. So we've made and expanded this image using the generative AI, but there's more. It doesn't stop there. Let's move over to our next image. So we have a completely new image, but of course, because we just had the crop tool selected, we need to uncheck this because that's not what we're going to use in this example. Now I just need to make sure that it's not selected. I'm going to press exit a few times and now we're not using the crop tool. You can see that we have a subject in the center of this image. It's a person standing on a lush hill with in the background, a skyline and some more beautiful luscious hills. So in this example, I want to change the background. I want him to be standing somewhere else entirely. We're going to do this using this generative AI. In this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the rectangular marquee tool, select it. I've done this to get off the crop tool because it gives a completely different type of generative AI tool. There's also a watch quick video where it's going to talk about the rectangular marquee tool in this example. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to select the canvas so that it comes off the screen. You can see that once I selected the canvas, something different happened. 
Let's just go back onto the rectangular marquee tool just to make sure that nothing different happens here. There we go, we're back. With the rectangular marquee tool selected, you can see that the generative AI is saying select subject. I can create a selection from the most prominent objects in the image. Now this person is going to be a prominent object and you can see we have a cursor here which is pointing at things. Let's select the object in the center of the screen, which in this case is the person. That didn't work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the uh, contextual taskbar first where it says select subject and watch what happens here. So I tried to use it freehand to make that selection and instead the AI has made the selection for me. So at this point, the AI has selected the most prominent object in the scene. If you have something that's completely solid and is the center focal point of a scene with brilliant edges, then you'll be able to make that selection using the generative AI. This is cool because now we can inverse the selection. So we have our subject selected. We want to select the background. To do this, go to the tabs and go to edit. In edit, you will see, no, sorry, it's not edit. You want to go to select. So move over to select. You can see here, we can change our selection. We can select all, deselect or inverse. In this example, we're going to select inverse and that's going to make us select everything else except for what we originally selected. In this case, the background, the hills, the mountain, the sky and everything. Here, we can change the background completely. We can use generative fill and select it without making a prompt. What that will do is it most likely will remove the background. But let's have a look. So let's select generative fill. Let's not add a prompt and let's select generate to see what happens. In theory, this should remove the background from the prominent object that we are now deselecting and we're selecting everything else in the scene. In this example, the background. What happened here is the AI has created an entirely new background without us actually entering a prompt at all. We have three variations of this and of course you have this in the right hand side as well in this menu and you can move along with it by pressing the arrow. I pretty much like this one right here where he's standing on water. Now let's show you how to do this with a prompt. So let's do this with a prompt. So let's first make our selection by selecting the subject. It's going to pick the most prominent object in the picture. And in this case, it's the person. So it's going to make the selection. Then we're going to inverse that selection by going to select. And then we press inverse, which is going to select the background or everything else except for what we originally selected. Then we're going to go into generative fill. And this time round, we're going to create the background. So let's cre create a brand new background instead of the AI creating it for us. In this example, let's use an ice mountain. So let's see what it creates when we give a simple prompt, ice mountain. So we've quickly created an ice mountain background, but remember there are those other variations as well. Just quickly showing you how you can do this as a beginner and create a brand new background for an image. Now let's move into reflections because there's more that you can do and I want to show you how reflections work with this generative AI. We have our image, but we need to create a reflection in the scene. Let's say you want some water or some ice that is reflective. Let's show you what happens when you do this because you can create shadows and reflection. In this example, we're going to use the lasso tool to make our selection as opposed to the generative AI or the rectangular marquee's selection tool. So let's draw a rough mask of the area where we want the water to appear or ice to appear. I'm not even gonna zoom in. I'm gonna make a completely messy selection of the area just to show you how powerful this AR tool is. So let's just quickly make our selection. Now pushing along the edges, we'll make sure that the edge is selected and it's creating a straight line fairly easy when I'm doing that. Letting go of the lasso tool, of course we'll close the loop and now we have our selection. Going into generative AI, let's try some calm water or calm reflective water. Reflective water. So we're describing the type of water here that's going to help. Let's generate the water beneath our subject, which is this lady sitting on a bench. Of course, it's going to look slightly out of place, but we want it in this example because I'm trying to show you how this generative AI can work and what it can do for you as a beginner. So we very quickly made a selection using the lasso tool. Then we've given a generative AI description, a prompt. So we give a descriptive prompt this time. And now you can see that the water is reflecting the shoe of this lady on a water 
down below and you can see that right there there are different variations to it and of course you can add to this as well so let's say you want uh, uh, let's blue so calm blue reflective water as opposed to clear water let's see what that creates and we can generate by adding more to the prompt right here and you can keep adding to the prompt until you're happy with the result so let's have a look at what it creates now we've added blue to our prompt let's see if the water will be blue or the reflection on top of the water will be blue because i didn't really make that distinction and you can see right there the water is blue in this example and it's filling the tone of the water going along those different variations again so it's giving you different types of blue reflective water but if you're unsure which variation you're selecting you can always come up to the right hand side here and you can see the different versions that it's created for you now we've gone through reflection let's show you how you can change your hair and add more let's go into hair so we're going to change the hair of this image right here we're going to use the lasso tool again i'm going to make a rough mask around the hair area of our subject in this picture here i'm going to be very very rough with the type of mask that i create and just quickly make a really solid selection of what we're trying to select here the, the closer you can get the better of course the results will be but in this example i'm being very rough just to show you how powerful this ai tool is i'm going to go around the hair as roughly as possible just to show you how powerful this ai tool is and how it can help you as a beginner i've even missed the edge of the air in some of this selection here but i'm just holding gone to that click and dragging my mouse around the hair area and just making sure that it's focusing on the hair i've even missed some hair follicles that are strands off the edge right there and it should still change what we want it to change here it's blending her brown mousy hair into the brown jacket clothing that she's wearing so i'm going to go into that i'm not even going to make a selection or a distinction between the two and then i'm going to go around the hair to close the loop on the other side just making a lasso tool selection over hair that's quite rough i'm even going to go over the face right here and just making sure that i have the hair area as opposed to selecting the air the hair <laughs> uh, distinctively letting go of the loop that's going to close the loop and now i'm going to select the generative fill and i'm going to type blonde hair it may create blonde highlights or blonde hair let's take a look we're going to select generate to create those variations using the generative ai let's see if the ai will change the color of our subject's hair right here we've used a lasso tool and then we've generated using a simple non-descriptive prompt And generate now we should theoretically change the color of our subject's eyes right here keep in mind we view the lasso tool and also held that shift button so we can make two selections as opposed to one lasso tool selection so let's say for example you wanted to change both eyebrows and not just one eyebrow making a selection at a time you can do that right now we've just changed the color of her eyes ai can do a lot more in photoshop i'm not going to stop there let's show you some more so we're about to get crazy with the lasso tool let's make a new selection and in this example first we're going to go for the clothing so i'm going to go around the clothing here starting from the neck just going around it 
and go around the outer rim of the clothing right here. Again, being quite messy with my selection. With the edge of the image, I can push down because I'm at the edge of the image, so it doesn't matter how far I am from the mask. So just making sure I'm going to the part that I want to be on. Then I'm gonna go up along the hand, missing the edge. You can see there's some more clothing on the edge there, on the right hand, on the left hand side. And I'm just gonna quickly close the loop, avoiding the hair and coming back to the neck collar. I'm gonna let go of the loop here. We've made a lasso tool selection, but right here there's some red left behind. I'm going to make this jumper a completely different color and a completely different jumper in general. Let's go for it. So I'm going to put, let's make a different color jumper, maybe a blue fluffy jumper. Generate. So now we're changing the clothing of this subject. We've changed the eyes. Now we're changing the clothing, again using that lasso tool and a very, very rough mask. I haven't been too tight or too close. I haven't even zoomed in on the image. We're going to change the clothes of our subject here. This is a beginner friendly tutorial and check that out. So what it's tried to do is it's tried to do something entirely different, maybe because we've selected some of the leaves. And let's look at the other variations as well. So it's changed the jumper here. And as you can see, although it's quite messy, you can see that you are capable of changing clothing using the generative AI. It's tried its best here. There are a few issues and it might be because my mask was very messy, but there's more that you can do. So let's go back after I try to actually fix this mask tool here and make a better selection. So maybe we could try and add some glasses and some other different types of clothing. So I'm gonna undo this one and I'm gonna try again very quickly so I have a better result. So let's just quickly try to make another selection because I have done this before with a better version. But if you're not being completely neat with your selections, you might find that you might have some leaves and such interrupting your generative AI. I've been very messy with my selection here. I haven't been tight. And as you can see, there were some leaves in the clothing right there. <laughs> Something that we didn't want the clothing to introduce as well. Not, not to have, we didn't want the clothing to have leaves in it as well, did we? So let's go back in here. Let's call it a uh, fluffy jumper as opposed to another colored jumper. So let's change it to fluffy jumper, selecting the clothing again, and let's generate to see what it creates. So now you can see this generation is slightly faster. We have made a selection and it's been rough and we've gone around the neck as well. Let's see what happens. Because of course you can also remove objects from scenes and more. So you can do the same to remove objects from scenes. Now we've changed the jumper. We've changed the jumper right now successfully. Let's have a look at those other variations. And as you can see, it's also filling in some of the skin and shoulder of the subject that originally wasn't there in the scene before. Right, so we're completely changing the image. I like that one. That looks quite natural to what we have in this shot. So right now we've changed the color of our eyes, changed the clothes that she's wearing. There's more that we can do. And we're going to do that right now. This is the part where I'm going to blow your mind. Check this out. Not only can you change hair color, backgrounds and more, you can also change the texture of something. That's right, you can change the texture of something. Using a lasso tool again, I'm gonna go around the hair. And I'm going to make a selection, a rough selection of the hair. Just making sure that I'm getting the rough area of where the hair is. Also going down the neck, going around our new jumper, <laughs> around the leaves, making sure we don't select too much of the leaves because we know what happens when we do that now. Going all the way up the head and I'm being very quick here with my selection, being absolutely messy with my selection. And then we're going to go around the hair here. Keep going until we close the loop on the other side into our new jumper that has been created along the face. I've been, I've gone into the face right there. I've gone into the hair. <laughs> it's a really messy uh, selection for now. And I'm gonna close the loop. And I'm gonna put wet blonde hair. I seem to be changing the hair blonde quite often. Let's generate this image right now. So we've just changing the texture of the hair and the color of the hair. So not only have I changed the texture, I'm also changing the color. So let's change this to wet blonde hair. So we've changed the texture. Let's have a look right now as if she's been soaked in water. Now with red eyes and a completely different jumper. Let's see what happens. So we've changed her hair to wet blonde hair, new jumper, different color eyes, there's more that we can do. Let's blow your mind. 
So now we're going to make another selection. Actually, first, before we do that, let's have a look at the variations. So we have our variations here. <laughs> you can see the different types of hair that we have. There's more that we can do. Let's blow your mind a bit more. Not only can you change the texture of something, you can completely change the race of somebody. Check this out. We're going to change her skin color. So we're going to make a selection around the lady's face. Just making sure that we're avoiding the hair area rather than the hair as a selection itself. Going down the neck, around the neck, and ready to close the loop on the other side. Just going around the face, all the way up to the top, and leave it at the top. Now I'm going to enter my prompt, and the prompt is going to be black skin. Watch what happens here, because it doesn't just change the skin, it changes the race. Generates. It might occasionally also change the facial features. So because we've selected an entire face and not just a feature on the face, you're going to see what this is going to do right now. So we're about to get the results. And as you can see, she is now a black lady from a white lady to a black lady in a few clicks. And we have a couple of variations as well. We also have a lighter brown skin lady and you can see there is also a, a not too natural looking face as well. This looks more AI generated as opposed to the others that seem to look more natural. So you can toggle, of course, for your liking. Not only can you do that, let's say you are editing somebody's picture for a magazine or something of the sort. We can add lip gloss and lipstick. This AI is extremely powerful. So I can go along the mouth right here. I'm using the lasso tool again for a messy selection. I'm just going to go around the mouth and I'm going to add a prompt pink lipstick. Let's enter that into the generation and let's see what it does. So I want these lips to be pink and have lipstick, maybe lip gloss or something of the sort. So if you want to get into depth of your creations, then you can do this. I'll also get into a nail varnish in a second as well to show you that it is capable of doing that. So we've just changed the lips. Let's move a little bit more. It's rather changing the, the teeth and the lips, but as you can see right there, if we zoom in, let's get a closer look at exactly what's happening here. Sometimes you might find some artifacts in your generative images. So you need to pay attention to that as well. But of course, if you're not looking for something in depth, then you can have those variations with no problem. But check that out, just changing the lips and changing the lip texture. So we've changed the skin color, lip texture, and more in this beginner friendly tutorial. But of course, you could also change things like nail varnish. So let's go for a different type of selection tool. So I'm just gonna go in the drop down on the rectangular marquee tool here. We should be able to change the uh, rectangular to a circle. We can't right at the moment. I don't know why, but we can add glasses. So I'm going to do a rectangular marquee selection tool here. So I'm going to try to add some glasses to the subject. Let's just go over the face and make a rectangular shape where the glasses can appear. And I'm just literally going to type glasses and generate. And you will see that we'll be able to create some glasses, but I'm also going to dive a little bit deeper for you beginners out there, just to show you something that can help you when you're generating an object over somebody's face, because there's something more that you can do. And let's show you that right now. So we've just generated some glasses, but it's also changed the eyes. If we go through the different variations here, you will see that the eyes might occasionally change. If you want the eyes to remain the same, you can edit the mask. If we click the mask right here, but this will get rid of some of the uh, creation that you might have on top because those glasses have a reflection and quite a deep reflection. Uh, judging from the image in the background, it looks very natural at this point. But let's say you're doing this for yourself and you want yourself to remain. In the mask here, you can see that the mask is white. So if you take a closer look, you can see that the rectangle selection is white. If we change the color selection here to black and then we go into the mask and then we use a paint tool you can see that if we rub into it using the black it will remove what was originally there so now we've re revealed an eye 
by literally removing some of the mask. Now she looks a little bit odd right now because there's a missing part of her glasses with the original eye because we've removed some of the mask. And that's how you can also do the same thing on the other layers as well. For example, if we go into black skin, so we got into the black skin layer in the layers here, I'm on the mask. And let's say we start to draw on top of it. You will see that the white skin will then come through. And I'm just doing this as an example as to how the mask works. And you can see that taking place. Now that looks quite odd and might be kind of, you know, if you're kind of squeamish, I'm just going to get rid of that by undoing, pressing Control and Z. <laughs> just so uh, you don't have that odd looking image right there. It's a horrifying image, if you will. <laughs> but uh, if you put everything together from what we've just done, you'll be able to create an entirely new image using what I've shown you in this beginner tutorial. But let's not stop there. Let's do a little bit more. I'm just going to make a rectangular selection over her nail varnish to see if we can change the color of her nail varnish. And let's just make this red nail varnish to see if it can pick out the object in the selection. Let's generate to see if this changes what we need in this rectangular marquee tool selection. So I've made a rectangular selection over the nails that are visible. Let's see if it pinpoints the object in the selection. So let's do that right now. And it has, it's changed those nails to a different color nail varnish. But what you've noticed is there is a sort of uh, distortion here on the fingers. So keep that in mind when you're making a rectangular selection and trying this tool. You might have some odd, you know, uh, what do you call it? Distortions, if you will, of your image when not selecting using something like the lasso tool. Right, so let's say you want to select the entire subject in the scene right now because we've had a different selection. If you want to undo your selection, go to select and then you want to deselect if you're selecting anything or deselect layers. In this case, I am going to go to the main layer that we have, which is the background. So we're on the background right now. We can select subject again. So let's select subject. It should select the subject in the center with the screen. The main subject, the main object that is prominent of the scene, it has. It's also gone around where we originally made our mask for the hair. And let's go into that select again and inverse the selection. And then we're going to go to generative fill. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put city just to see it create something else for the background. Let's select generate right now. And remember, you can also add objects as well. It doesn't need to be just the background or the main prominent object in the scene that you are editing using the generative AI. You can also change things and add things to the scene. So right now we've completely changed the scene. I did say city, so it's gone for maybe a city park. There is a city slightly in the background here. There is a goujon blur over the background, so it's hard to tell. And if we go for the variations, we have successfully changed the background, but it's also going for a Christmas background as well and you can see that some of the edges aren't actually transforming along with this as well so we didn't use the lasso tool for this selection and there are a few issues that's how you can use this tool generative AI in Photoshop if you've enjoyed this which I definitely have, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the Mr. Money YouTube channel for more. We've been using AI in Photoshop to completely change the image. I'm going to do one more thing in this scene. I'm going to add a lamppost, but with a rectangular selection before we finish up right here. And I'm just going to put lamppost really quick. Lamp post just to see that creation before we finish up. Check this out. You can do this right now in Photoshop. This is a beginner tutorial for you that I very much enjoyed. And I'm guessing you have if you've made it this far as well. But check this out. Just wrapping up, check this out. Boom, lamppost with a blur because there's a goujon blur in the background. So it matches the scene, matches the lighting of the scene. It's an entirely new image from what we originally had. This is amazing. Subscribe to the Mr. Money YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.